Hi, I'm Paul Edwards with Norton Klepper. Today, we're going to replace the pulley on a C1318P. To start the task, the first thing we'll do is remove the blade guard. And to do that, we'll need a 16 millimeter wrench. This can either be a ratchet or an open end wrench. First, remove the two bolts that retain the blade, uh, belt guard. Two are located in the rear and one located at the front of the machine. Next, simply lift off the belt guard and set it to the side. The next step that we'll be doing is loosening the belt tension. And to do that, we'll need to slide the engine forward. We'll loosen two en uh, the two engine retaining mounting hardware in front of the machine, two in the rear. After loosening the four engine retaining hardware, we'll go to the back of the machine and loosen the two jam nuts on the engine tensioning device. Now we're going to remove the outer set collar. In order to do this, we have to remove two set screws which are held in place with thread locker. To make our life easier, we're going to use a propane torch to heat up the set screws to burn off some of the thread locker. Under normal conditions, about 15 to 30 seconds worth of heat will do. What you normally do is heat each of the heads of the set screws until you see a little smoke come out. I would also recommend using some sort of heat shield in case you heat it a little too long. In this case, we're using this metal flange. Slide it over the set collar, fire up your torch. After applying heat long enough to burn off some of the thread locker, I'll take a four millimeter hex key and remove the set screw. After removing the first set screw, we'll apply the same process to the second one. After loosening the second set screw, remove the set collar. Then at the rear belt tensioning device, the rearmost set screw, uh, jam nut, we're going to loosen it in order to pull the engine forward where we can remove the belt. Simply pull the engine forward as much as possible and slide the belt off the pulley and out of the way. Now we're going to heat the two set screws that are located inside the pulley Use our three millimeter hex key. Loosen the set screw. And repeat with the second one that'll be 180 degrees away from the first. After heating the second set screw, remove it with the three millimeter hex key. Now we're going to remove our first set screw. And now I'm going to thread this first set screw into a hole that's halfway in between the first and second one. This hole is designed to help separate the bushing away from the pulley. As you tighten it, the pulley and bushing will separate, allowing you to move, remove the taper lock bushing and the pulley from the shaft. And now we'll use some brake cleaner to clean off the, the engine shaft and keyway. And at the same time, we will clean off the new bushing, set screws, and pulley to ensure that it is both grease and debris free. After we've cleaned our new pulley kit, bushings, set screws, and set collar, we'll begin the assembly process. Place the key into the keyway. Next, we'll take our pulley, slide it onto the shaft. Then we'll take the bushing, align the keyway with the key, and simply slide it onto the shaft and pull the pulley over the bushing. At this point, we'll align the set screw holes, the three holes up to one another. Now we're going to take one of these set screws from our bushing assembly that's been cleaned. 
attach it to one of the holes that are 180 degree apart. One will be here, the other one is here. I'll place the second one in the second hole. After attaching the second set screw, you'll notice that the pulley assembly can move on the shaft. This is going to be very important as we move into the belt installation and pulley alignment process. At this point, make sure the engine is fully forward. We will slide the belt over the pulley. Make sure the belt is in all the grooves. on both the engine and blade shaft pulleys. We will start to tension the belt by tightening the rearmost jam nut as we start to apply some tension. We'll keep a visual look at the pulley location and in a moment we'll start to use our straight edge to get a very fine and exact pulley alignment. When aligning the pulleys we'll use a straight edge and what we're going to do is place a straight edge on the surface outside edge of the pulley that's already fixed that was on the machine and we're going to move the other pulley in this case our engine pulley in and out on the shaft until they make perfect alignment. As we start to tension or tighten the set screws, this will pull our pulley assembly outward a little bit. So I recommend having about a sixteenth of an inch offset during our alignment process and keep verifying that to make sure that this pulley surface is even with this pulley surface when the belt is fully tensioned. If not, the belts will come off the pulleys. We'll continue the process of tensioning the belt by moving the engine back and tightening the two set screws while moving the pulley back and forth until we arrive at a perfect alignment. Once we have a perfect alignment of this pulley surface to that pulley surface, we'll tighten both of the set screws. Once we achieve the sur perfect surface alignment, then we'll tension the belt until we have about three-eighths of an inch deflection on the top surface. That's pushed down, it should move from the neutral position about three-eighths of an inch and up roughly about the same. Anywhere from a quarter to three-eighths of an inch is about perfect tension. Then we will tighten the four engine mounting bolts using our 16 millimeter wrench and socket. After tensioning, uh, tightening the four engine mounting screws, we'll tighten up the jam nuts on our engine tensioning device. If you loosen the one that holds the eye bolt of the engine tensioning device, make sure you tighten it at this point also. After everything is fully tightened, now we will apply thread locker to each one of our bushing set screws. To do that, we'll take our three millimeter hex key and remove one set screw at a time. Apply one drop of the permanent type thread locker. Insert the set screw and fully tighten. After tightening this one completely, I'll repeat the process with the second set screw. After installing our pulley assembly and ensuring that we have pulley alignment, we're going to install the set collar. If we take our set collar and look at it, we'll notice that the hole for the set screw is closer to one side or edge of the set collar than the other. We want the side with the threaded hole closest to it to be facing away from the engine or towards us. One bit of helpful advice is to go ahead and pre-install your set screws with one drop of Loctite. 
this point, push it into the shaft as far as possible and start to tighten the set screws. As I tighten the set screw, keep pushing on the set collar to make sure it's fully against the pulley. Now we can install our belt guard. Take the belt guard, slide it over the belts, aligning the three holes in the belt guard with the three mounting nuts. If you remove the collar cover, at this point, reattach it with the hardware. This completes the replacement of our pulley. One thing to keep in mind is if you're replacing the blade shaft pulley or the engine pulley, the process is exactly the same, with one exception, and that is the hex key to remove the set screws. The blade shaft pulley will use a five millimeter hex key. The engine pulley uses a three millimeter hex key. Thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned for more from Norden Clipper.